Overnight, police seize almost a kilo of cannabis and firearms from a Wayala Nori home. And the Sydney to Broken Hill Air Route service under review as regional airliner Rex struggles with airport costs. This is Southern Cross News with Abby Donaldson. Good evening. Police have seized almost a kilo of cannabis and two firearms during a raid at a Wayala Nori home. Authorities are warning residents they will not hesitate to get illegal weapons and drugs off the streets. This evidence represents a fair day's work by Wyala police. Authorities raided a property in the Wyala Nori area yesterday morning. On inspection, police discovered a number of illegal drugs and firearms. Wyala police had reason to attend an address in Wyala Nori and conduct a search of that home. Police located two firearms that were possessed unlawfully and a trafficable quantity of a substance. Authorities seized around one kilo of cannabis contained in 12 glass jars. Two rifles, one of which was fitted with a scope, were also taken away, while police also discovered a slingshot. Senior Sergeant Fillmore says these items had the potential to cause harm within the community. Capacity cause injury and damage. Uh, a brace slingshot, as this one was, uh, is a prohibited weapon and possession of it is illegal. And the authorities are warning they aren't stopping their hunt. Senior Sergeant Fillmore says they have no hesitation in removing them and their owners from the street. We have a zero tolerance when we come across drugs uh, in terms of removing it from the community and put a lot of resources into that. A 45-year-old man has been arrested and charged with trafficking a controlled substance and firearms offences. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Regional airliner Rex has announced it will cancel or reduce some services out of Mildura due to increased airport costs. The Silver City is said to be affected by the decision with the Sydney to Broken Hill Air Route service under review. Patrick Reinke has the details. In May 2017, Rex extended its partnership agreement with the Mildura Airport for three years. Over a year later, the airport increased its head tax by 22.5% across all routes. This was eventually changed to a 13.7% increase and applicable to the Melbourne route only. But Rex didn't hold back about the tax hike yesterday, labelling the increase a blatant money grab from the airport. They claim Mildura Airport's revenue is about three times the amount needed to run a regional airport. The airliner says it'll make adjustments to its schedule, with priority given to airports and communities that work with them supportively. In a statement, Rex said Mildura was a community which they dedicated resources to, making it a rare regional town with connections to three capital cities and also Broken Hill. Now though, due to the unreasonable increase to airport charges, Rex has decided to cancel or reduce its services between Mildura and Adelaide and Sydney and Broken Hill. Rex says further details about the changes will be announced soon. They also added that they would be ready to re-engage with Mildura when more enlightened policies are in place at the airport. Police are praising Wallaroo residents for their patience and assistance during the two-day lockdown as authorities search for alleged fugitive Jake Don't. The 25-year-old will remain behind bars until his next court appearance in January, while 27-year-old Ashley Ida Fenning, who allegedly helped Don't evade police, will remain in custody to front court again next week. Homeless numbers are on the rise in Port Lincoln with local services seeing more than triple the amount of rough sleepers. Support services say lack of affordable housing in the region is only making the problem worse. It appears Port Lincoln is on the verge of a homeless crisis. We've seen a significant spike actually um, which is kind of distressing to see that we're, we're getting such a big representation of people coming through the doors, um, significantly around rough sleepers. On an average year, West Coast youth and community support support five to six people a year who are sleeping rough, but that figure more than tripled last year with 29 people seeking help. There's probably more numbers that didn't present to us, but those are the actual ones who came through our doors and sought help. The problem compounded by a lack of affordable housing with support services finding it hard to seek budget accommodation in the region. We want to make sure it is in that afford affordability range for them um, and that means you know around the $150 a week a mark and there's not all around in Port Lincoln that goes with that price. 
The local support service has also been busy helping with the simple needs of warm clothing and food. West Coast youth are always appreciative of any extra donations with anything from beanies to blankets as well as non-perishable foods to provide for those in need. We will never turn back anything like that because there are so many people in need and we are grateful for any community member that comes forward and does donate. Casey Trelaw, Southern Cross News. A group of Wyala residents have marked five years since offshore detention was reopened with a protest today. They made a statement with a rally outside member for Grey, Rowan Ramsey's Wyala office. It's part of a national day of action which saw marches across the country. On display were 12 pairs of shoes representing the 12 asylum seekers who died while in offshore detention. While Manus Island recently closed, Australia still operates an offshore detention centre on Nauru. The new Wyala jetty could soon be home to an artificial reef. Giles MP Eddie Hughes has written to the state government asking Wyala to be considered. The York Peninsula already has one and it's been credited with revitalising the area. Mr Hughes says it would be a major draw card for locals and tourists. So you might uh, get a, a greater range of, uh, of species uh, um, aggregating around the, uh, around the reef. Environment Minister David Spears says they'll look at the proposal. Port Augusta has shown its support towards a new advanced composting facility proposed for Stirling North. Owned by Pete Soil, the facility would be the first of its kind in the Upper Spencer Gulf. A new facility to turn green waste into a gardener's dream. A high grade granulated product. Pete Soil has been looking at developing a composting site in the Port Augusta region for over a decade but struggled to pull together enough money. But funding from the federal government, as part of its jobs and investment package, helped plant the seed in the ground for the project. It's been a, a really good initiative from the federal government to do this. The facility is said to provide around 15 jobs on site, as well as extra employment opportunities for truck drivers. The Port Augusta Council has given in principle support on its proposed location, the inactive refuse reserve site in Stirling North with development plans set to be submitted in the coming months. Once I've got those contracts and those terms and agreements done with the council, we'll start ordering the um, equipment and then we'll be underway. If developed, the facility could be the first of many around the state, with similar projects touted for Wyala and Port Lincoln. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. Still to come tonight, how an Air Peninsula pork producer is tapping into a niche market as the industry deals with its lowest prices in years. Port Piri Regional Council has commenced its 2018 election campaign. Council is calling for more diversity within the chamber to accurately represent the wider community. This year's council election is fast approaching and it's time to make a difference. It's the time to do the thinking whether it's you or somebody you think in community who could represent the people in your area. Council is calling for more diversity in the chamber, with females currently representing just 20%. Half the chamber would be female. 51% of our population are females. We don't have that number at the moment. Council has never had a female mayor or an elected member under 30. Two councils representing people under 30. Uh, we would have one person who was from a multicultural background and we would have two people who are 65 years or older. Council is urging prospective candidates to start planning their election campaign and to attend the Candidate Information Night on August 15. Nominations to run in this year's election open early September. We will have people from local government, uh, a mayor from another council and our CEO talking about what it is to be a councillor and how you campaign. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Work crews on the Wentworth to Broken Hill Pipeline have started excavation work on the streets of the Silver City, but the hard rock which lies underneath the surface of the pipeline route has been a challenge for the trench diggers. They've had to use over 7,000 tungsten steel teeth to break through the hard rock. Crews have been spotted on Gaffney, Slag, Griffith and Crystal Street with some traffic delays in place for the time being.
Meantime, parking at Broken Hill Airport is in for a shake-up with Council introducing a new parking layout. The new setup will see one bay restricted to two hours, another to 24 hours, while the third parking bay remains as unlimited. City Council says they've received a number of complaints about the parking situation and hope the new zones will solve it in the short term. Smart technology will detect when cars have overstayed their welcome and fines may be issued. An increase in pork production across Australia has seen the market tumble to its lowest prices in eight years. But one Air Peninsula producer has been able to avoid the downturns by tapping into a niche market. Putting pork on people's forks, proving costly for some. We've just gone through a phase of a bit of an oversupply and um, the market trends haven't picked up that extra product. So their farmers are definitely seeing a downturn in their profitability and they're, they're doing it pretty tough. And while Australian Pork Limited has worked hard to boost the product's profile, it's been up against other competitive markets. We're also seeing upward trends in demand for other products, so lamb and beef. So pork is definitely the cheap uh, protein at the moment, so get behind that. But Jason has been able to insulate his production from the current downturn by tapping into a niche premium market. We, we do tend to charge to premium and gain a premium. That being said, our pigs are free range, they are heritage bred. So there are factors that limit our production and our productivity, but we, we regain that in a market share and a price. And his unique free range product has been able to engage with high end restaurants. We've got a fantastic clientele within Port Lincoln and, and Greater South Australia and, and beyond. We're sending a bit of stuff into state as well. So just what makes Port Lincoln's pigs so special? Our pigs are free range certified, so we've spent the time, effort and money. They do have the lifestyle I believe that they deserve. Casey Trelaw, Southern Cross News. Wyala Aged Care is raising awareness of how to care for someone with dementia. They've held an info session at the library with speakers from Dementia Australia. The session looked into all aspects of the illness and how to help someone who is diagnosed. To help them understand, to you know, find out ways that they can manage at home, tips and ideas on making life easier. 250 people a day are diagnosed with dementia and that figure is expected to rise to 650 people a day by 2056. The Wilmington Oval is sporting some new digs with renovations on the facilities wrapping up. Organisers say improvements to the facility are key to maintaining participation numbers. This hall in Wilmington plays host to all sorts of town events, from chemical certificate courses, national parks meetings, even church groups. Renovations to improve the facility are now complete, meaning the community can continue to give it full use. We've got a new carpet with lino lay flats around in here and then on the outside we've got a uh, shelter veranda extension of the uh, roof line. The facilities are heavily used by the footy club as well as local community groups. The Oval's management says the 30 year old carpet was overdue for a makeover. Being a small community, you've got to keep attractiveness to your facility, otherwise people will drop out. The renovations were made possible by the Federal Government's Stronger Communities Grant of $9,600 and supported by local volunteers who pitched in with the building effort. I mean, I feel very proud that we got it and the end result is definitely worth it. 60 people were the first to test out the new facilities as part of a community fundraiser last weekend. Many impressed at the revamped centre. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. Stay with us after the break. We'll have fish and tips. And the wet weather did arrive around the region today. All the local weather details are up next. Welcome back. Time now for fish and tips. <laughs> Welcome to another week of Around the Golf Fishing Tips. As with every negative, there's a positive. Last week it blew so hard we actually used to have to play tennis with our fish. They were just getting blown out of the ocean. This week will give you a better catch rate. There's a bit better tides happening and because of the blow, it stirred up a few things and I think you'll find that the King George will be on. So we look at Eastern Shoal, the deeper water in between Checkerboy. Don't forget to have a try for some trout while you're there. They're great for teaching young kids how to hook up and there's still plenty of squid floating around the place. G'day and welcome to this week's fish tips from Port Augusta, Jewel of the North. Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag at the moment. Still obviously the squid around uh, along the shacks uh, and also out in the middle bank around Lady Spitting up the old number nine. There's some little rat kingfish around. Uh, they hang around the creeks area, up around Chinaman's Creek and uh, up in Port Patterson. 
Lots of salmon around if you're trying for the kingfish as well. A few big flatter getting caught, uh, sort of around the beach area off the shacks in the early mornings. And there's also some crabs around out in the middle, but uh, it takes about 10 minutes before they get in the, uh, in the nets and get on the bite there. That's all we have from the Jewel North. Hi, Whalers Fishing Report for this week. There's been some really nice, good numbers of big squid guys down towards Mount Young, so get amongst those. Best area to target has been in the two to four metre water depth. Some days they've been in, out a little bit deeper and other days they've been in, in a little bit shallower water. So work those depths and you should be able to get a good feed. The King George Whiting are going to be slow this week due to the bloodworm run. Also the snapper as well. It's going to be really hard work getting amongst those fish this week, guys. But if you work the grounds, you should still be able to pick up a feed. Land-based, there's been some nice salmon down towards the Point Lowly Rocky areas. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. Well, the south coast of Port Lincoln continues to fish really well for salmon. The Sleaford Dwana stretch, when the swell is down, is producing plenty of salmon, um, up to around about three to four kilos. Back in the bay system, squid have been the main target, but there's also been a few snook and a few garfish. There's been some yellowfin whiting still along the town foreshore, especially on the big high tides. Moving over to Coffin Bay, the uh, whiting grounds out around Farm Beach continue to produce quite a few whiting. Still quite a few small fish mixed in, but some bigger fish are coming from the deeper drops. On the nice Weather, there's been some uh, nanagai, some red snapper, and also a few pink snapper out wide of Sir Isaac's. And that's all for this week. We'll see you again with more fishing tips next week. Time now for the weather with Amy. As mentioned earlier, it was a wet day for most centres. Port Augusta saw showers and a top of 19. Wet and windy for Wyala and 17. Broken Hill, a high of 21 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite now, and skies are mostly clear across the state under the influence of high pressure. Patchy cloud in the far southeast near a front is bringing the odd shower. Take care if you're planning to spend time on the waters tomorrow with strong southwesterly winds up to 30 knots and seas reaching two and a half metres. Sunrise will be at 21 past seven while it will set at 5.30. Checking tomorrow's forecast and some districts will continue to see the wet weather. Port Lincoln sitting at 15 degrees, 14 in Port Perry. Although showers will ease on Saturday, they're set to return in Port Lincoln leading into next week. A wet Monday predicted for Cleve and 17 degrees. Meanwhile, a couple of wet and windy days coming up in Woodna. Showers in Waiala early next week, however temperatures will creep up to 20 degrees. Similar conditions for Port Augusta and Kadena after a mostly fine weekend. Wet weather returning for Port Perry and Clare also with maximums in the mid to high teens. Meanwhile in Broken Hill, a fine 20 forecast for Monday. So Abby, keep the umbrella handy, it's looking like we'll be needing it over the next few days. Thanks, Amy. Always good news. And that's the local news this Thursday. Thanks for your company. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.